This video will cover how to apply channels when placing lights, add or change channels to an existing light, lighting channel settings, change lighting intensities in a rendered image, and see the final results. Hey, I'm Dennis, and I'm going to show you how to use lighting channels today. This is one of my favorite features of iRender Next, and I'm really excited to show it to you guys. So what are lighting channels? Here you can see two lighting options for the same model. One primarily lit by the sun and sky through this window, and the other lit by the ceiling lights and spotlight. Using iRender Next lighting channels, I was able to create both of these images very quickly by simply adjusting these slider bars here. There is no need to re-render this model to get what you see here. Now let me show you how I did it. So to start, of course, you're going to need a model with some lights in it. You can either use one of your own or download this one from our 3D Warehouse account. Just search for Render Plus Systems. So first, I'm going to quickly show you how to place a ceiling light. To do that, come up to our iRender Next toolbar and click on the Lighting button. I'm in the Ceilings tab now, and you'll notice this new area down here for lighting channels. This is how you set the channel for the light you're creating. I'm showing you how to do this with a ceiling light, but the setup is the same for all other types of lights. So let's change this to channel 2. I'll explain why channel 2 in just a minute. But for now, it's important to remember what channels you use because we are going to need them later. And then just click on Create Lamp and place the light wherever you like. Okay, now let's say that you've already placed a light, such as a spotlight, like I've done here. And you either need to add or change a lighting channel. Well, that's easy enough to do. Just right click on the light, then click on Edit Lamp. Then this box will pop up, and this is where you can edit many of the settings for the light, including its light channel here. With light channels, you can either give a group of lights a channel, like we did with the ceiling lights, or just an individual light, like we're doing to the spotlight. That's great because you can control either a bunch of lights at once, or just individually. So let's make this channel 3, and click OK. Okay, great. Now we're ready to render this model. Just come up to the toolbar again and click on the green button. Then on Load Options. Then the Lights tab. Now there's this whole new area down here for lighting channels. And the first thing it's asking is how many channels we're going to be using. And the answer is four. Why four when you only saw me assign two channels? One for the ceiling lights and one for the spotlight? Well, the other two are for the sun and sky. And this next area down here is for the default channel settings. If we don't bother to add or change channels to the lights we create, these default channels will be assumed. And you'll see that the defaults only apply to these five lighting types. Now remember how I changed my ceiling light to channel 2? Well, that's because channel 0 and 1 are for the sun and the sky. And I just like to leave them alone because it's easier for me to remember them that way. Now don't worry about how this says the ceiling lights are channel 3. Earlier we changed that to channel 2, and so these defaults here would be overridden by that earlier change. So all together we're going to be using four light channels. One for the sky, one for the sun, one for the group of ceiling lights, and one for the spotlight. Now of course before you render, you'll want to make sure that you have edited all the materials and changed any settings you need to in order to get the best results. If you don't know how to do this, Make sure to check out our website for more video tutorials, as well as documentation. Okay, now I'm going to render this and show you what I get. And here you go. Looks pretty good. But let's say I'm not super happy with the lighting. With light channels we just set up, we can very easily adjust the lighting to fine tune this rendering. So to start, you want to click on this button here, and this is going to save the image to disk. Now it's very, very important that you save this as an NXT image file. And then click on Save. Then click on Open File. Now remember before, we told it that we were only going to use four channels. That's why these last four channels are grayed out. The first thing I want to do is adjust this spotlight over here. It's a little bit too dim for me. So if you remember, we assigned that to channel 3. So to increase the lighting, it's just as simple as sliding this bar to the right. And in real time, you'll see the light get brighter on the table. For further control, we can edit this value box here. Now see how easy that was to increase the intensity of that spotlight? Really super, super cool and easy, right? Okay, now I can do the same thing for channel 2, which is our ceiling lights. Slide that to the right, and watch the light increase in real time. 
Now you'll notice that this is smart enough to not only increase the brightness of the ceiling lights, but also increase the reflections on this back wall here accordingly. Okay, now I'm going to move my image over here a little bit so I can see the window a little better. Now I want to make the sun softer. I want more of a nighttime look and feel to it. So the sun is channel zero. I can just slide this bar to the left till the sun's all gone. Now I'll do the same thing to the sky. Slide that to the left until it's almost all gone. All right, perfect. I really love how quickly and easily we are able to totally change the look and feel of this image. I never had to mess around with changing any settings or repositioning lights or re-rendering, all of which can be very time consuming. With iRender Next and Lighting Channels, it was a much simpler process. And once you get this image looking just the way you want, you can save this as a JPEG and or go back into the SketchUp model and modify your lights based on the changes we made here. All right, and here they are again, side by side. I think this is an amazing feature of iRender Next, one that will not only speed up your working time, but also give you a better final image because you're able to fine tune the lighting so well. All right, well now that you guys know how to do this, it's your turn. Give lighting channels a try and make sure to show us what you come up with. All right, thanks a lot, we'll see you again soon.